to another day in the life of K. Pokemon Go, the alpha, the omega, the digital savior that has brought all of us together through our cell phones and gotten us outside to play with each other. The concept, the idea has literally gotten us out of our seats and gone to places that we have never gone before. But something as precious as this little app can be so beautiful, yet so ugly at the same time. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. The five things that I just absolutely cannot stand and hate to deal with in Pokemon Go. Number one, there is absolutely no instruction when it comes to playing this game. You create your character, you're in the world, and go. Absolutely every aspect that I have come to know about this game, I have either learned on my own or I have researched online, and yet, they seem to be debunked in some other form of way. Ultimately, I wish there was a 101, a tutorial, if you will, that would help insert you into this world and get newbies along their way, because I'm gonna see a lot of number threes running around, or not, if you know what I mean. Number two, if you happen to live in the middle of nowhere or in suburban areas, as we would call them, God help you if you run into a Pokestop, literally though. Because if you walk into a church, you're pretty much gonna find a Pokestop there. I don't know if it was a ploy to get people to go to church, but definitely if you are in need of a Pokestop, if there's a church, when in doubt, check it out. Another thing that they didn't take into consideration when it comes to these suburban areas is that everything is very, very spread out. The parking spaces are even bigger in these areas. So just imagine walking from Pokestop to Pokestop from one shop to the next in 90 degree weather. All right, maybe I can ride a bike around, but if somebody's living in New York, they're gonna do a whole lot better than I'm gonna do block to block than I can do on my bike. Number three, holy crap, these servers are laggy as hell. Yeah, I had early access to the file and I was able to install it on my phone and get on the servers, but even then, when not too many people had access to the game, it was still laggy. You still got servers are currently unavailable. They are various examples, going to a gym, trying to enter an encounter, and the game just freezing up and you needing to close it and restart it. Don't do this at home or try it on the road, but there are times when I will see a Pokestop coming up and I'll get on the side of the road, hit my blinkers, and swipe it to get that Pokestop. But you know what? It'll tell me to try again later. No, motherfucker, I don't wanna try again later. There's another instance in which I literally got into my car, drove across to the other building because there was a Pokestop there, and on top of that, they had a lure, and I get to it, I swipe, try again later. And yet another instance in which I take myself to Costco because I need to pick up some chicken and some salmon because I gotta eat tonight, right? So I have the game on and I put it in my back pocket because I have the low power mode on. And Costco, as you know, is a really, really big store. So I walk around and when I get out back to my car, I look and the game didn't pick up the GPS signal. So all that walking never registered. And they want you to actually get out and walk and explore the world, but when you are trying to play the game or if you put it in your pocket for a little while and it forgets that it's on, all that walking is in vain. Number four, the fourth thing that I really just don't get, and this is like generally the basis behind this game, is the tracking system. If this isn't a hack job of a tracking interface, then I don't even know what that is. Because as I point back to point number one, there is no instruction on how this stuff works. And after playing for a few weeks, I finally kind of get the idea that there are three footprints that measure the distance. One being the closest, three being the farthest. There have been times when I have the tracking up and I'm walking and I'm going into that direction that I believe that the polywag is in, and all of a sudden it just disappears off the screen. And so I'm like, okay, well, let me turn around and walk back that way. And no, it's gone. It's as if it was a ghost, no pun intended. Number five, last but not least, this is the absolute buggiest game that I have ever played in my entire freaking life. Yet, it has been one of the best dang things to ever happen to us as a gaming community. It's kind of like that time when I was growing up in my mom's house and I did something wrong and I went and took a shower, came out and I was wet and she came in with a belt, yeah. But at the same time, she cooks dinner and I have to sit there and enjoy it. And I gotta be grateful because she actually cooked dinner. But all in all, there has never been a game that I have played where I have experienced such joy and frustration all at the same time. So I give it credit. I give it credit where it's due. Even though this game makes me wanna throw my phone at my Charmander, I will still pick it up and continuously play and play and play. Now, if you follow me on my Twitter, I posted a tweet of how to play this game. You should go check it out. So yeah, guys, that's all I wanted to talk to you today about. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe. And this is just another day in the life of Kay.